Hello again booktube. Uh, Books with Banks back again today with the second in my series of five plan uh, Carcanus analysis videos. Uh, the first one I released uh, just a couple days ago um, that was just going over what all of these videos are going to be about. Uh, this one is the why you should read Carcanus trilogy uh, video. And then the last three, that's where I'm really going to put a lot of my effort on a lot more of my uh, research and work into. Those are going to be three analysis videos looking at different themes that uh, Steven Erickson explores in his prequel uh, trilogy, or the first two volumes at least, of his prequel trilogy of uh, his, uh, in his prequel Carcanus trilogy. So, uh, as I just mentioned, and uh, as you can probably see from the title, this is why you should read Steven Erickson's Carcanus uh, trilogy, or at least the two books that are out so far. Uh, I'll say this is entirely spoiler free for all things Malazan. I won't spoil any of Erickson's other series, uh, especially I won't spoil uh, Carcanus. I'm not going to spoil anything that Esselmont wrote either. Um, so yeah, yeah um, if you're looking to get into either specifically this prequel uh, trilogy or just the general Book of the Fallen, any of the Esselmont stuff, whatever, uh, if you're looking to get into any of it, uh, don't worry about me ruining anything for you guys there. Uh, so uh, before I kind of get into some of the big bullet point reasons of why I think uh, the series might work for some people, uh, I should uh, I should mention, I should go over the prerequisites of what you probably should read before reading these two books and eventually when Walk in Shadow, the third book comes out, um, the, uh, this whole trilogy. So I do think at the bare minimum, uh, what really helps is, or what would help is to have read uh, the 10 uh, Book of the Fallen books. Um, those down there, um, to read all of those, at least the main 10 Book of the Fallen, before this trilogy, because there are references in some of the later books in Erickson's main series. Uh, also, Erickson wrote those 10 before he wrote this, so you can see sort of how he grew as an author, um, how he... Uh, and especially in the later books in that series, he starts to, he, I wouldn't say he ever like abandons themes in certain uh, arcs or certain ideas that he's exploring uh, early on, but he definitely does shift um, to a more kind of deep thinking um, exploration of, of just, I guess, basically just different themes. Uh, near the end there. Uh, so, and then in the Carcanus trilogy, he carries over a lot of that. Uh, so I, I, I think someone, if you want to, you could try jumping in um, to all things Malazan with Forge of Darkness and Fall of Light being your first two books. It might be a little more confusing to you, um, but I do think there's still plenty of, or these, these books, they can sit or stand alone um, in that the story is compelling enough and the characters are original and um, interesting enough where you don't need to rely on, you know, cameos, references, things that a lot of other prequel or sequels uh, often do, uh, you know, to like draw on fans and keep fans hooked. Um, there are those references and those cameos in uh, Kakanas, but I think uh, they're, they're actually pretty toned down so uh, e even if you're missing out on some of the uh, some of the references to Book of the Fallen because this series happened so many millennia before um, the main ten it, it I, I, I'd say you don't have to worry about missing uh, missing out on those Easter eggs quite as much as or as much as you'd have to worry about that in other authors offshoot side series so, uh, th that, again, that's the prerequisites. Um, at least Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen, 10 book series, uh, that is a great um, way to be introduced to Erickson. I would recommend people read that first. That's not to say that you can't give Forge of Darkness a try. Uh, if 
you'll reference my uh, Malazan or Steven Erickson written uh, Malazan books ranking. Uh, I did rank Forge of Darkness uh, fourth out of all of the 13 novels that Erickson's written. I ranked Fall of Light sixth. So uh, they they do average out in the better half of uh, of all of his works, in my opinion. So it, they are really, really great books. Um, I, I, I would be curious to hear from anyone who maybe tried reading these before Book of the Fallen just to see uh, what that experience was like for you. All right, so now moving on from prere prerequisites, I'll kind of give a brief explanation of what the series is about. Uh, basically, uh, we're in this time period where the city of Carcanus uh, is, you know, run and ruled by and inhabited by the Tyst people, um, who, uh, they, they've just fought, uh, this war against a, another race, uh, that's very, that very much preaches justice and sort of absolute justice and that with an absolute certainty rules their civilizations with an iron fist and uh, leaves no room for moral ambiguity uh, and so uh, this Carcana civilization has basically just come out of this war against this really self-righteous really kind of oppressive cruel um, race uh, of creatures. I won't say what race that is because if anyone is anywhere in the Malazan reading kind of journey uh, that could be I, I guess that could be spoilers, um, but yeah, so Carcanus people, uh, they've just finished up this war, and now all of the different legions, armies, factions, you've got your wardens who kind of go out and explore more and have to deal with um, the Vitcher Sea, which is a sort of sea of light, kind of a breach portal almost thing. And then you have Ur, Ur Sanders Legion and Vather Ur Sander was a big war hero and he has a lot of sort of followers that just love him and idolize him. Uh, and then of course at the middle of the Carcana City you have Mother Dark herself who is a pretty elusive um, mysterious sort of figure uh, and exactly how she has her power, how she got her power, whether or not there's magic involved in any of that, what her relationship is with some of the um, Azathani or godlike, demigod-like beings that, you know, filter in and out of Karkana society. Her relationship with those people is, uh, is a little mysterious. So that's kind of where everything starts off. A lot of interesting stuff going on. Basically, the factions in a society are, there's tension between all of these factions after uh, this great victory, after this war. Um, and there's a lot of, th th there's a lot more political scheming, I'd say, in uh, these books, at least in the first one, Forge of Darkness. Uh, there's a lot more introspection in the series. A lot of these characters in this post-war slash sort of maybe pre-war. I mean, th there's tension and there's this fear and anxiety that civil war is on the rise. Uh, now, whether or not that happens, you'll have to read the books to find out. And of course, a bunch of other factors play into whether or not that's going to happen or what shape and form that this civil war or internal um, conflict between all of the people of Carcanus um, and the um, Tyst society, uh, what what that conflict might look like. Um, but because of all of this tension, it really gives Erickson a lot of room to play around with uh, people or with his characters uh, and their introspection and a lot of internal monologue, uh, internal, uh, really kind of brutal, honest, um, self-critical analysis, looking back at you know, things they might be proud of, things they might really not be proud of, uh, that they hate about themselves uh, in their past, you know, like during that war or before, uh, or things that they're worried that they're going to do, how they think their life or their role in this world is changing. Um, th there's a ton of that. I find it all very, very compelling. Uh, however, if you are someone who doesn't necessarily like a ton of like that those italicized long paragraphs of someone really just thinking and processing uh, their uh, their thoughts on a 
one or two page scene and then you know ten pages after that we're still kind of sitting with the character processing what just happened um, even if it was a small moment um, there's a lot of deep thinking there's a lot of the characters analyzing each other um, but I'd say more often than not they're analyzing themselves so yeah th that's as vaguely as possible uh, I'd say that's what someone should expect from the Carcanus trilogy at least again the first two books that are out and, and so now we get to the thrust of the video which is the why of why I think people should read these books or why I think um, they might appeal to a lot of people uh, on booktube if you're already invested in the Malazan world and you're really enjoying uh, whichever series you're reading right now, whether it be Malazan Book of the Fallen or Esamot's novels of the Malazan Empire or the Balkalin Corporal Brooch novellas, whatever you're reading right now, if you haven't read uh, Carcanus, it's yet another avenue of the world to explore. Um, and I think Erickson really, really took advantage of that, uh, where he's definitely using new techniques uh, and he's his style is really evolved and changed um, and he's using a very unique style to write these two books in. I, I think if you're really curious, if you're already invested in Malaz and, and you're curious to explore yet another avenue, um, and, and to see what Erickson is trying out, all of the new techniques, the new style he's trying out here, uh, please give it a go. Um, even though he wrote these, I believe it was like 2012 and 2016 when they were published, or maybe 2013, 2016, something like that. Uh, so it's been a while, and he's written uh, quite a bit since then. He's, um, if I'm not mistaken, he's released the last two, I think, um, novellas have come out since then. He also wrote the first book in the Witness trilogy, sequel trilogy to Book of the Fallen. Um, he wrote that God is Not Willing since, excuse me, since Fall of Light. So he's written other stuff that isn't in this style, so it's not like all of the things he's writing now sound and feel like these books. He is really intentionally trying out um, and playing around with this style. Uh, and I find it really, really exciting. Uh, if you give it a try, um, I, I think it's at least worth a try to see if you enjoy the style. Uh, I also think someone who might benefit from reading these books, um, if you if you are missing in a lot of the other fantasy that you've been reading, the opportunity to really do a deep dive and really kind of struggle with reading from certain points of view uh, from someone who in another book might just be written off as, oh yeah, that person's pretty horrible. I don't like them. Um, in Carcanus, if you're looking for sort of the challenge of sympathizing with some horrible people, um, obviously not agreeing with them or forgiving them or um, you know, saying, endorsing any of uh, horrible characters' behavior. Erickson's very careful never to endorse any of these horrible things. Uh, but by sticking us in the mindset of some of these less likable people, um, he, I, I think Erickson, especially in these two books, he does a really good job at making us consider the questions that those types of people in the real world might be grappling with which i mean you know we're all most of us are going to be thankful that we're not horrible people and we don't have to consider these things uh, but it's it's such unique perspectives um such unique ways to understand what remorse looks like to someone who has really done something horrible so horrible that we could never even conceive of and to be stuck in their mind and kind of watch them grapple with that um, it's interesting uh, but again it it's interesting in and of the or in the narrative in and of itself uh, but then from like a writing standpoint uh, i find it fascinating to watch how mr erickson has uh, kind of he's so artfully balanced showing us what this is but also never making any exceptions or, or ne never making any apologies for these horrible behaviors. He's very good at, at towing that line. Um, that sort of a depiction 
is not endorsement uh, kind of thing. And I, I, I think no one could read these two books and think any of the horrible things that happen are um, are okay or that the characters are redeemable. I would say these books are just not really about redemption. Um, it's more about making choices, regretting choices, uh, helping family, who are you loyal to, your family, your army, your soldiers, uh, your children, um, a, a lot of things like that. So uh, I might end there because I'm rambling a bit now, but if anything that I've talked about so far uh, sounds interesting to you, uh, please give these a try. Uh, they're, they've are they challenged me as a reader more than maybe anything I've ever read. Um, and I, I absolutely love them and I just want other people to have as enjoyable experiences as I've had with these. Um, and I, I, I fear that, uh, especially I think there was a little bit more mixed to negative uh, critical reception of Fall of Light. Uh, so I, I really hope that people aren't or haven't been too turned off or hesitant to start the series because of that. Uh, because I do think there's a, so much rich content here and so much fun um, so much fun character work and uh, just writing on, on the on technical level to analyze and to, to get into. Uh, so yes, uh, please let me know if, uh, if anyone out there is hesitant to start this, please let me know what you might be making you a little more uh, hesitant here. Uh, if anyone has started and bounced off, I'd also love to hear kind of what uh, what were the points that you really struggled with in these two books. Um, also, if you would uh, want to comment that uh, down below, then other people can see what other people's problems were with the series. Um, of course, I'm not a very unbiased, uh, I can't be an unbiased um, uh, source on this as I love the book so I'm not sure what a lot of people struggle with I can only guess at the points people might struggle with um, so yeah if you've had problems or if you if, if you don't like the series as much um, of course don't hesitate to comment below uh, those comments are just as welcome as uh, other people who have started and are loving it, who have read the two and can't wait for the third. I can't wait for the third, uh, Walk in Shadow. I expect, uh, I, I mean, I, I trust that Erickson, even though I think he's working a little bit more on the Witness trilogy right now, I'm really expecting and hopeful that um, the Walk in Shadow will be out in the next two or three years, some, somewhere in there. Uh, that might be a little soon, maybe three or four, but uh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. And uh, please let me know what you think down below. And uh, please uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, also uh, look out for my uh, my first uh, Carcanus video analysis uh, essay. Um, and that'll be out in, in just a few days. Uh, and that title is Who is Just and Who is Just Self-Righteous? Uh, thank you again. Have a good day.